Hi, so I just want to do a quick video about uh, an installation I'm currently doing. This is an outdoor installation that where we've got a number of um, light fixtures using 24 volt lead tape and we wanted to add some sensing locally to each fixture and I was wondering you know, can we do this without actually adding in any extra cabling. So we've got two wire connection to the lead tape. This is using my um, 24 channel DMX dimmer that I've done a video about before and basically what we want to do is have some local sensing so that local motion triggers a lighting effect over the whole installation and so you can see there's just two wires on here two wires to a sensing board but we've got this motion sensing without any additional cabling so i just want to do a quick um rundown of how this works and it might, yeah, might be useful for other, all sorts of other applications so this is our basic lead dimming arrangement we've got 24 volt lead tape uh, which comprises of groups of six leads in series and internal series resistance 24 volt supply and then our dimmer which is just a mosfet um, switching um, with different pwm ratios to get the uh, different brightnesses now because these leds have a fixed forward voltage of of the order of three volts each these won't do anything at all until they get about 18 volts across them so we can actually make use of that so what we do is connect a 15 volt zener resistor i think from memory that was about 1k to ground so for our sensor we need two things we need power to the sensor and we need to signal back to it so this arrangement will generate some power to the sensor because this zener is 15 volts and we've got 20 volts 24 volt supply these leds are only going to see about nine volts across them so this zener is not going to cause these leds to light at all but it means that we can now have a, a sensor there's just a reverse polarity protection diode 3.3 volt regulator and um, we're using a microcontroller here, a um, little PIC 10F uh, with an accelerometer. But this sensor could be pretty much anything, as I'll, I'll show in a minute. So, obviously, when this lid is on during the PWM cycle, it's seeing 24 volts here, so it's got plenty of supply. There's a 10 off cap there but when the leds are completely off we still have a supply via this center so the, the, we get about nine volts so this sensor current draw is about half a milliamp so that gives us our supply to the sensor now to get that signal back what we do is have a transistor here a resistor there's a lead which is just for, useful for status indication that's not actually essential but we uh, have a transistor that connects a 2k2 load across the the led array so that means that when this transistor turns on we get about one milliamp current flow now remember that um, because of this zener when the leds are off no you know, no current flows essentially but when this transistor turns on we get about a milliamp current flow so when the leds are off we get current flow down this path here which means we get a voltage across this resistor so what happens is that when this sensor decides to turn the transistor on we get a high voltage of maybe a couple of volts at this point so we can actually use that for our sensing we can also communicate a small amount of information by um, adjusting the width of this pulse so in the case of the motion sensor the actual amount of motion it's seeing is encoded by the uh, the width of this pulse and that's up to like a few hundred milliseconds because we're using multiple channels and the other thing to bear in mind is because this this is turning on and off in this case 250 hertz this signal when the leds are switched on we won't get that signal so what we actually see is a load of pulses so this is our 250 hertz pwm frequency and this is the length of our pulse that we're trying to detect because we're, we've got 16 channels this then goes into a multiplexer so what i did i just put a simple filter so that these pulses here are just smoothed out so that we don't have to worry about this PWM, we can just detect whether that pulse is there or not regardless so we don't have to be in phase with the um, LEDs etc. Now of course this sensor could be anything, here it's an accelerometer, it could be a PIR movement sensor, it could also just be a simple switch if you, have, if you literally want say a button or something, a mechanical switch at the location of the LEDs, all you actually need to do is put your switch there in a resistor and that's all you need. You still want the Zener here, the Zener effectively dis differentiates between the 18 volts-ish voltage drop across the LEDs and the simple resistive load of your sensing. And if we just look at this on the scope, the top trace is the voltage across that 1K resistor, so you can see the LED PWM frequency there. If I change the LED 
duty cycle you can see that changes but we, we, the, these um, high levels are the these pulses we're getting back and then this is just a filtered version after that um, diode and um, capacitor filter so that this is effectively just a DC voltage for the length of the pulse so we can just measure that periodically to measure the length of that pulse to get um, an idea of the magnitude of what we've detected and obviously one thing we can't do is get detection back when the LEDs are completely on 100% because the PWM is effectively turning them on continuously however in practice this isn't a problem in practice because you can just turn them on for like 98% or 95% of the time and you just don't notice that visually so as long as you've got a little bit of off time there you can get your detected um, signal back and if you look at the actual implementation I just did an extra add on board this we're only making a couple of these so I just did a little add on board to the dimmer that's got the, um, the Zener um, that diode filter and a 16 channel analog multiplexer and that's just driven from some existing lines that I'm picking up off the um, dimmer PCB and the motion sensor is just this little board here so as an LP2951 3.3 volt regulator so you've got to remember this could have up to 24 volts coming into it so a lot of 3.3 um, volt regulators won't um, deal with that our reverse polarity protection diode, our 10 off input cap um, PIC 10F322 accelerometer and that's the output transistor and just the uh, output resistor and the uh, LED and just a couple of other little details on there obviously with a board like this and the system you know you want some um, diagnostics so you can tell what's going on if things aren't working so the LED does a few things one is when you first turn it on you just get a brief flash just to indicate power when it's triggered obviously you get a, a flash in proportion to the length of the detection so this is just on to show that um, that sense signal is going back but also because the you can only really get accelerometers in these stupid tiny little packages there's a sort of obviously scope for badly soldered joints and so on so the other thing it does as well as continuously reading the acceleration value it also reads the device id out and if that's wrong if i just short one of the i squared c pull up so that it uh, reads reads wrong it just turns the lead on continuously so that can be used obviously for the initial production you know you power them up if the lead comes on then you've probably got a bad solder joint there um, another issue i found with these accelerometers and this one i don't know how common this is but this one in particular suffers from an issue where if it, if the um, power supply browns out it can get into a situation where it locks up and just is, is unresponsive so if i give it a very brief power up, power down i might be able to get it to do that um, of course, I can't actually get it to do it now, but basically, yeah, there you go. So that, that's now in its locked up state. And um, because the dimmer can actually control the output power banks, the software can actually detect that and then do a power cycle, try to try to recover it. But say on just a little board like this, where you've got you know, very little information, just having those lead indications just makes life a whole lot easier for production and um, sort of maintenance, testing, etc. So I thought that yeah, that was quite a neat solution to this problem. Obviously this is for 24 volts, it'll work equally well with 12 volt systems. You just need to just basically change the value of the Zener to get a different voltage. So, but the key is that with that Zener in place, you don't get any current through here. That's really just the only thing you need to set up. So just depending on your lead forward voltage and your supply voltage, you need to adjust that. And so this sensor can be pretty much anything. It needs to be something that draws a fairly low current so you can get like a decent different, yeah, signal here to uh, detect that pulse. But say this could be anything from a simple switch, could be you know, a light sensor, accelerometer, sound sensor, anything where you might want some sort of sensing or detection. Yeah, the location there. You, you could also use it, for example, if you've got an installation where you're concerned about heating, you can maybe have a temperature sensor that periodically sends a pulse proportional to the temperature. So, for example, if you want to make sure that your LEDs don't overheat, if you've got a sort of fairly high power LED installation, you could actually use that for feeding temperature back again over just over the two wires. And for something like temperature, you could probably also even just have um, a simple resistive sensor. So you don't even need the, you know, to do the pulse thing. You'd have a the thermistor and a resistor. And over a certain range, you'd have to work out, you, know, you could actually use the analog voltage that you see across here to um, get the information for the resistance of that um, temperature sensor. Also, you need to be quite careful to make sure that yeah, your voltage were in the sort of range that didn't get affected by the drop across the Zener but you, know, you could probably get a fairly reasonable range of analog feedback um, through this using basically the same method and again just filtering it to avoid the um, the effect of the BWM uh, you, you would need to watch that we need to measure it over a fairly long period because different PW, PWM variant values would also affect that analog voltage to a smaller extent but um, I think that yeah that could be quite a viable solution